What's up guys, welcome to another episode of the Adventure Trailer Build. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to build my version of the Max Coupler, um, which is a three-way articulating hitch. So, uh, first of all, what is a three-way articulating hitch and why is it important? So imagine if this hand is your truck and this hand is your trailer. Now, a standard ball hitch is really good at doing this. Basically, if you make a left turn, the trailer follows you around the curve. Works really, really well. Unfortunately, off-road, this is just one axis we're concerned with. There's also this axis as you're going through gullies and over, over peaks and stuff. Um, and a ball hitch will do a little bit of this, but it won't do a whole lot of that um, without popping off. And so it's not really a good solution. The other problem is as you're going through washes and stuff, a lot of times the truck will go this way and the trailer will go this way as it's following a path. A ball hitch really doesn't like to do that. So we're going to build a custom three-way articulating hitch. Basically, those are our three axes, left and right, up and down, and twist. Um, so there's a few things that I want to get out of the way before we just jump into this. Uh, the first is I will provide links down in the description to the original thread where I found this design. I don't know if that design belongs to that guy or not. Um, or if he took it from somewhere else, but it's where I got the majority of information. It's an excellent thread, an excellent read through. I highly recommend you go through it. The second link I'm gonna provide is to a company called Overland Equipment uh, Adventure Trailers, and they sell a version of this hitch that they call the Max Coupler um, for around $250. Now that sounds like a lot for a hitch, but it's rated for 6,000 um, pounds, and Basically, if your trailer falls off on the trail and, or on the highway and kills somebody, it's their fault and not yours. Um, and I can't overstate how important that is. So in addition to the regular boilerplate you always find in the description of my videos, um, the other thing that's important here is the additional boilerplate, which is this is not a 90 amp Harbor, for, Harbor Freight flux core job. Um, you need to have good welding equipment. Uh, you need to be knowledgeable. Um, I am by far from an expert welder, but I've done frame modifications in the past and obviously I've built other stuff. And so I'm very comfortable with my welding skills. This is not a first time welder tackle project. This is something that you uh, can take care of. If you have experience and you've done a lot of this kind of thing before. Um, so, Please enjoy the video, but keep in mind, this is, uh, I'm not responsible for any dumb shit that you do uh, with this information. So, with that, uh, let's kind of get going. Now, I bought all this stuff either from my local tractor supply or on Amazon. I've provided Amazon affiliate links. It's in the second tab of the worksheet along with all of the other uh, fabrication stuff. So let me kind of go over what's on the table because it seems like there's a lot of things here, but it's really a, a very basic design. So over here, you have a variety of these um, category two, category three bushings. You need two of them, they're called top links. Um, I don't actually know what these are made out of. I mean, obviously they're steel, but uh, they're for, for farming equipment and I'm not a farming guy, so I, I really don't know. Uh, but obviously all the part numbers are down below. So there's two of these kind of big ones that fit uh, over the bolts. Um, there's a thicker but smaller diameter one, and then there's a thin small diameter one. This is a 5 8 reducer. This basically gets you in here to get you down to the correct size for your hitch pin. Um, I'm going to use a lock eventually, but I have this. This is like two bucks or whatever. Um, just for test fitting purposes, this is a standard 5 8 inch uh, hitch pin. Um, you're going to need this. This is called the top ball. Um, this is going to provide one of our axes of rotation. Um, this is like a pretty big hefty piece of steel, uh, but you can get one of these at tractor supply as well. This is a locking collar. Um, again, some piece of farm equipment, it's a uh, one and one quarter inch locking collar. Uh, we have a grade eight uh, one inch diameter by six inch long bolt, a one inch diameter by three inch long bolt. We have three one inch washers, uh, two of which we'll use as washers, one of which we're gonna cut apart. I'll show you guys later what for. You need one one inch nut and then you need two uh, pieces of steel. This is um, our bumper, or our uh, towing tube. 
So this is two and a half inch outside diameter quarter wall. This is standard receiver stock. This is two inch outside diameter uh, quarter wall. And in addition to that, you don't have to, but I'm going to install these guys. These are just basic greaser fittings. I got this 50 piece set from Harbor Freight, I don't know, six years ago. Uh, and I'm still slowly working my way through them. We're probably gonna use a couple of the uh, quarter by 28 TPI straight fittings, uh, but we'll see how it, how it all goes together. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of it. That covers the stuff that's on the table. This isn't a particularly difficult build, but it does require a certain degree of precision. The only thing still missing from here is you're gonna, you're gonna need a standard, a uh, kind of truck hitch for a ball. The problem, the reason I don't have one yet is because you need to find one that matches the difference between the trailer height and the right height of your vehicle. And I haven't had a chance to measure that um, because obviously you've seen them, they come in with like a, you can have a straight one, a one inch drop, a two inch drop. And if you flip it, that's a one inch lift or a two inch lift all the way up to crazy shit that's like six or seven inches long. Um, so we're gonna need one of those, um, but it's not critical for completing the max coupler today. Now, first things first, uh, we got to drill a hole for our hitch pin. Um, this is this piece is about six inches total end to end. Um, we're gonna put it about halfway in, so we have basically as much meat as possible on either side. So the way I normally do this is I just mark the uh, three inch axis right here, and then we'll take this and find the center point. This is two inches thick, so the center point is at one inch. So basically where these two lines overlap. And then we use this, which is kind of a, like a steel center punch marker type deal. And then I always drill a very small like uh, pilot hole. This is a center drill bit, um, which will give us kind of the starting point. That way our next drill bit doesn't walk. I like to use a little bit of oil and these step belt bits um, with kind of an impact style driver on them. There we go, that's all the way through. Now this next piece is a reasonably complex shape. Um, we've got one big hole for the bolt in the bottom. We're gonna make some, some slices. We've gotta take some material out of here and we've gotta drill um, for the pin. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill for the pin and Bingo. Okay, next step is we gotta make these relief cuts. I'm gonna try this with a half angle grinder. We might move to the plasma in a minute. Though.
there we go. Now it's uh, pretty nicely made. We gotta do a little bit more grinding cleanup, but looks pretty good. <laughs> So, uh, next step, now that we have the head of this bolt ground down, um, what I did was I took this and I marched, marked little um, flat spots in it with a grinder. So basically, this ball is going to drop down on top of this head like this, and then one of these larger um, fittings is going to come down like that, and then this whole assembly sits in here, and that basically gives us our rotating axis. Um, I might have to cut this fitting down a little bit, but... That's basically it right there. Um, this part gets welded to here, and this end will get welded to the T, and so it can't escape, and this kind of gives it a, a, a bearing surface to sit on. So that's that. Uh, the next thing we gotta make is the T. The T that goes on the end of here is like this, and like that. So we're gonna have to notch this guy out um, to help this fit in here, and then we can weld this all together. Next step is we got to shave this head bolt, the head of this bolt down to fit inside of here and rotate freely. So I'm just going to use this bench grinder uh, to get that ground down. The last piece we have to do um, before we can complete assembly uh, of this is to put a greasable fitting in this piece right here. So in order to do that, uh, you want to use a 7, 7 30 seconds drill bit for a quarter 28 tap. So I'm just going to mark a point here. Boom, done. Okay, so we're ready to weld. The first step is getting this pretty much straight, tacked in and fully weld this T. Next step is to get this welded in here. Now that this is welded in, the next step is we slid half of this guy in here just as a retainer. This will basically pull the bolt taut like this and then we'll weld it right here. But first we're going to weld on this. This is our, our receiver bit. <clears throat> so we're just going to do a perimeter weld here. Nothing super crazy. that is there we're gonna weld this right here and what that'll do is that'll stop this this sort of movement
Yeah, there we go. Nice and straight. And this will eventually go in here. And that will lock in with a pin like that. And hence our coupler. Now for building the other side, um, the truck side, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drill out this collar um, and tap it so that we can put our grease fitting in later. It's just easier to do this now before we start welding stuff together. So this uses a Q bit and we're doing a 1 8 inch uh, NPT grease fitting. And that, boys and girls, is called doing the right thing the wrong way. Absolutely improper tapping technique. Crummy old tap. But hey, it's going to be a threaded fitting. Beautiful. Perfect. Now we have our bung for uh, filling this bad boy up with grease. All right, the next step is to weld the spacer collar onto here. This is simply the other half of, of this piece from over here. Oh, it's still hot. So we're just gonna weld these two together. There it is. So the next little thing we're gonna do is I took one of our washers and cut it in half and then cut pieces off of it so that it fits in here like that. And then that way, when you're hooking the trailer up, you can basically just set this on here and it's gonna line up pretty close with the uh, dowel pins. That'll just make loading and unloading the trailer a little bit easier. So I'm gonna just line it up like that and then zap it in. Remember, this cuts down towards the bottom. There we go. Again, doesn't have to be super crazy, but now when this slides in here... Fuck, that's hot. It basically slips right in there. I have a little bit more grinding and cutting to do to make this uh, perfect. But this will just make it a lot easier and you can see the holes line up pretty well. So here's our completed coupler and all that's missing is the truck end. So basically this, my arm right here will connect to the truck. So now you can see we can rotate this way, we can rotate this way, and we can rotate this way. Um, I'm going to paint all of this. It looks all kind of a little dirty and we need to fill it with grease and it'll, it'll work a little better. Um, but yeah, so basically whenever you show up at a campsite, you basically just pull the pin, pull this off, and then the truck drives away and this remains with the trailer. And then when you're ready, you basically just slip it in like this. It sits in this cradle so you don't have to be trying to hold the weight while you're putting the pin in. And then, I don't know if I can, yeah, there we go. Pin slides through, pop the cotter on, and you're ready to go. Like I said, I still gotta figure out how much of a, a drop or a lift I need, because this drops it down quite a bit, so the, the, the hitch goes between these two washers down here. But I'm pretty happy with the way this came out. Um, I already have the tongue built uh, in another video, and so these two will just uh, kind of mate together and uh, when we're ready to go for our first test drive. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel and you want to see more uh, of the episodes of the Adventure Build trailer, hit subscribe. There's an Adventure trailer playlist. Um, and all of the parts and a lot of the tools that you see here are down in a Google Doc in the description below. Um, you can follow Amazon affiliate links. It really helps the channel. Plus, you can get the best prices on a lot of this stuff. Um, I've also included a link to the company that makes the, uh, the official Max Coupler. 
um, so that for those of you who don't have the welding skills or equipment, uh, you can purchase one there. I am not in any way affiliated with them. I've never used their product, but if you go on Expedition Portal or any of the kind of those fo kind of forums, you will see a lot of people using their product and seem to be pretty happy with it. Um, all of this here is about 45 bucks worth of, of hardware, um, which is pretty good compared to the 250 that they charge. But again, this is something I built myself. I trust myself. I've made um, you know chassis and stuff before. Uh, if you're not comfortable in your welding skills, this is not a good project to start on. Um, you definitely want to uh, be a competent uh, welder before you get into doing something like this. That's it. Thanks for watching. I love you guys. Peace.